the strike that was just called of uh, marks the fourth labor action since President Bola Tinubu's inauguration a year ago. Now, Tinubu's administration has ended the fuel subsidy that previously kept prices low and has stopped pegging the national currency, the naira to the U.S. dollar. Now, these policy changes have plunged the country into its one of the worst economic crises in a generation. Now, unions have threatened to strike again in seven days if their demands are not met through ongoing negotiations. Now, real estate survey and public affairs analyst Mustafa Ewela is here with me to discuss more on the impact of uh, the strike that was just called off. Good morning to you, uh, Thank Mustafa. You. Thank you very much for having me, Justin. All right, let's just talk about the strike. First of all, let me just get your candid opinion. Uh, did you really think it was actually necessary? So, yes, yeah, so I think that the, to start with, I think that our strike was very unnecessary. Uh, in the past few years, I think we've had too many strikes in the last few years. And if you look at uh, other neighboring countries, they don't get strike before anything happens. So what could, how could uh, labor um, so, avoid so I think, this I think issue? At this time, of, at this time in, uh, in Nigeria, we should have gotten to a point where we can settle issues without having to go on a national strike. But, 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 but then, okay, I'm not trying to play devil's advocate here, but yes, how yes. is that possible? Because before the strike, yes, you yes. know, there were negotiations, there had yes. been talks, and ultimatum uh, was given, and it elapsed. Uh, so what could have been the better way to handle that? Okay, so we have, uh, we have the tripartite community that makes up uh, the guys from the government uh, agencies, mm. the ministers for labor, employment. Mm -hmm. We also have the NLC, we have the TUC. And yes, the they've been serious. Sector. Yes, they even the informal sector. So mm. they've been serious of meetings before they, you know, went on this strike. Mm. I, however, I think that again we should have gotten to a point in this country where we do not necessarily have to shut down the system totally to get results for certain demands from the government. The last time there was a national strike in the United Kingdom was 1920. A national major one was in 1926. Uh -huh. So are you telling me that they don't have demands to, the labor force don't have demands from the federal government okay. in the United Kingdom? Still putting it this way, I mean, labor yes, force sir. has um, demands and uh, yes, maybe they have a, go a government who, you know, who listens. plans a listens and yeah. plans ahead because Analysts have also said that uh, the minimum wage is uh, subject to review every five years. And if before yes, now, we, should have, we shouldn't have waited this long to get our acts. You know, that even the one that the acts that we have uh, been using has expired since April. So yes. why were we putting the horse before the cart? Okay, so, so the thing is, to start with again, I think that our current minimum wage, uh, 30,000 air, which is equivalent to $24, mm. for me, I think is it total national embarrassment okay. to, a country like, to a country like Nigeria. Uh, so the current minimum wage law expired April 19, precisely 2024, which oh. was just a few months back. Yes. And the NLC felt that there was a need to revise it upward. Oh. But however, I still also think that what the NLC is clamoring for, which is a sum of 495,000 is very, very oh, unrealistic. Gosh. Okay, fine. And I think that it is high time we you know, wake up from our slumber and live in our reality. Oh. Nigeria as a country cannot pay a sum of 495,000 naira for minimum wage. Okay. Even the country that has the highest minimum wage, Luxembourg, oh. anywhere in the world, Luxembourg is a country of 6,605 6, uh, people, oh. a thousand people. I tell you what the only major on is agriculture. Mm. And these countries are countries who do not even have the numbers we have. Okay. They say that there's power in numbers. That's what I grew up to, to hear. Mm. Nigeria is a country of 220 million people, but I'm beginning to think that the more we are in this country, the, the, the bigger our problems. Okay. So that's, that's, my, that's my personal opinion. Mm. So however, so I think that it is high time we learn to address issues as a people in a very amicable manner. Mm. We cannot, shutting down the national grid, shutting down the system totally was mm. a complete fiasco. Mm. On Monday, practically, there was not, nothing happening in, in the whole of the country. As sure. we speak, sure. the national grid has not been turned on as we speak. And they've called, on the, they've called up the strike for, the, for at least one week. 
So are you telling me that whoever turned off the national grid is, has not heard that information that the shark okay. has been called off? Yeah. So these are issues that are affecting us as a people. Mm. We will continue to say that we want a better Nigeria. Yes. But for us to have a better Nigeria, our leaders have to be totally responsible. Mm. We, the followers, also have to be totally responsible. It has to be a unanimous decision to say, let's get it, stop, right. Let's get it right once and for all, mm. and let's stop to do things the same old ways and expect a different result. Different result. Well, arguably, though, uh, uh, at least uh, I, I, I had to sleep with power last night. I don't know how the situation. I, I, I guess I guess you're very lucky. <laughs> I don't think that the whole of Lekki has had lights in okay. Monday. The whole of Lekki. Oh wow. Okay. But most part, most part of uh, some part. Let me not say most because I didn't do a survey. But at least uh, I know in coming hours, uh, Nigerians will uh, get to see power. But that yeah. I'm not trying to hold before the the electricity workers. Yeah. You have said it that uh, the. The airports were shut down, you know, maritime workers, the hospitals. I even uh, felt that because I had um, a relative who was even discharged before time. You know, they were all asked to go home. The nurses were not attending, you know, to patients anymore. But um, in all of that, in your opinion now, what exactly would you say is a reasonable or minimum or living wage as it is you made um, reference to luxembourg uh what's uh, uh, less than less than a million uh six hundred thousand people okay fine but we have the numbers and indeed uh, we have all the resources, uh, resources which we are not really managing well but yes. then how do we begin to harness those resources and what do you think is reasonable enough okay so let me start with i like to always draw uh or make a you know, a close by African country, I like to always make, make them a case study. Hmm. A country like Ghana, the minimum wage in Ghana is about 18, 18.5 Ghanaian cities. Hmm. If you put that to Naira, that's about 1,800 Naira per day. Per, if day. You per day, yes. If you convert it to, if you do the multiplier effect in 30 days, that's about, that's well over 50,000 Naira minimum wage okay. monthly hmm. for workers. So, 30,000 Naira minimum wage, 60,000 Naira minimum wage. I mm. think that if we do something within the region of 100,000, 150,000 Naira, I think that would be fair. Okay. We talk our inflation right now, anybody earning anything less than 100,000 Naira in this country cannot survive. You see, we, it is always very good that we take this problem systematically. Mm. Let me tell you, one of the root causes of all our problems in this country is as a result of what, what workers earn. Mm. If you have somebody who is gainfully employed to your organization, either the private sector or public sector, if you pay them anything ridiculous, ridiculously low, hmm. one, there's not going to be anything to motivate them to work. True. Secondly, that is the genesis of corruption. Hmm. These people also We're have still families. From the system. For, it was still from the, from the system. I had the case of somebody who, who worked in a certain company and had to go and register a company in a separate name. Hmm. that looks very similar to the organization that she works with. Hmm. She registered the company, got a, even got a POS machine. So hmm. when people come to vent to pay, she gives them her own personal POS that she registered in a name close, very close to the company's hmm. name. And she was making, making the complaint wow. until they found out recently. So this is what happens when people don't get paid properly. Hmm. They will cut corners and that is it. I mean, in a country where our senators hand over 30 million a monthly and we are paying a minimum wage of $24. <laughs> It is very laughable. So, in, in your opinion, so uh, uh, do you think, uh, as a way of mitigating all of that, uh, you know, government, uh, that is that the legislature, the executive, you know, and maybe the judiciary could also should also cut down the cost of running in the operations or even their own um, emoluments. So we have always so for people like me, I've always clamored for reduction in uh, cost of uh, governance. governance. Cost of governance for me is too ridiculous. Really, it's too ridiculous. Hmm. If we end, if our uh, political office orders end so much, and the masses, the general masses, the, I mean, the, those who are supposed to be the one, even even because as as a leader, you are, you are a servant. Hmm. Those we are even leading, those you are leading are suffering, and you are as the head, you are milking them off hmm. the national common where then that's a problem. That's why those political seats will continue to be very juicy, and people will do anything to get there. But I mean, so generally, I think that something has to be done. We are not saying that 60,000 Naira is okay, but I think something within the range of 100 to 150 is a good start. Okay, well, well, in, well, okay, fine. Another line of thought would be the federal government. Okay, in as much as we uh, uh, 
experts have said that the 494,000 uh, that labor is demanding might be a bit outrageous. Yes. But the, the federal government had come out to say that it would um, amount to about 9.5 um, trillion uh, annually. You know, so if the federal government had the uh, the the willpower or the body language to pay, you know. Are you suggesting that uh, they should actually br bring uh, source the funds from what they are paying themselves to, uh, you know, to augment what they should be paying the the, the common man on the street? So, I, so, I, so I think that uh, realistically, that's what should happen. Mm. If they want to really be fair with us, what they are earning is through our treasures. True. Cut down the cost of governance. Use that those funds to improve mm. the lives of people in a, in a better way. If you had those funds, if you had the cost of governance. If you take off even 50% of what they are earning and add it to the minimum wage of what people are earning, mm. lives of people will be better. True. People are suffering. That's the honest truth. I lost count of people sending you, sending me account details in the past two weeks for, mm. for any. Yeah. And, and these are family men. So you wonder how... That's why... So, to live in a country where your take home mm. <laughs> cannot even take, take you home, home is a problem. Okay. To live in a country where the minimum wage cannot take an average Nigerian out of poverty is a problem. Mm. In America, the minimum wage per... In Canada, the minimum wage per hour is $25 per hour. Mm. But in Nigeria, the minimum wage is, is, is done on a monthly basis. So when you earn 30000 naira monthly, that's about 1000 naira per day. Mm. The cost of living has increased. Now, so I had to interview one, uh, somebody who was looking for a job in my organization. And, you know, when she did the calculation of her monthly expenses on transportation, it was close to 80,000 naira. Hmm. So, and she was going to be earning 100,000 naira. I felt really bad. I was like, how do you even want to manage? How to, you'll be spending, so people work in this Lagos, they earn, they earn 50,000 naira and spend close to 100,000 naira on transport. Hmm. How do you think they'll make up for the, other, for the other half of the money? How do you think they'll make up for their cost of living and all that? They'll cut corners. True. So this is the root cause of the problems that we find ourselves in this country. Hmm. If wages are not paid appropriately, if minimum wage don't increase to commensurate with our cost of living, if they don't match up, there's going to be a problem. And that's why you continue to see a lot of irregularities in the system. All right. Now, so um, over the past um, 48 hours right now, economic activities um, you know, were stored. And uh, I was trying to speak to an economist to just uh, you know, get appropriate um, statistics as by how much it cost Nigeria to be on standstill, you know, and he was saying something in the trillions of Naira. But in all of this now, we are looking for alternative dispute resolution. Now, if you were to advise now labor, in as much as they have a five-day window that they have proposed uh, for government to sort out uh, the issue of minimum wage, what should they be doing in as much as they are still bent on getting the best for yeah. the Nigerian workers and yeah. federal government is saying that they don't have so much to pay. Where do we reach a common ground? So to both parties, what would you advise them? Yeah, so, so my, my biggest fear is that even the minimum wage at the rate of 30,000 or something, mm. state governors are finding it very hard to pay. Yeah, that's the that's issue my biggest now. fear. And when this is also increased... Is that, uh, let's, even, uh, let's even analyze that yes, properly. It's like they are finding it difficult to pay or they are not really channeling their efforts to getting the internal generated, uh, internally generated revenue Funds, and yeah. that's why they are not paying or they are using the monies for their own personal stuff. So some state governors, uh, are in most cases, you know, spend such monies on other projects. Mm. But I think that that's, that's the misplaced priority. Okay. The labor force should be the first, the workforce should be the first priority. Mm. The workers, the public servants should be the first priority. If workers mm. don't have food in their belly, what projects are you doing? Mm. Who are you doing it for? When the, old, when the old citizens in the state dies, who are you doing those projects for? Mm. You know what I mean? So who are going to be the beneficiaries of such projects? So I think the first priority should be the people. There's power in the people, there's power in the numbers. But again, I'm beginning to question that assertion or that narration because mm. the, it's supposed to be the more the merrier. As the people, we are more in numbers. It's, it's, it's so unfortunate that even countries that are even lesser in numbers are doing better than us. Mm. So I think that what should happen is, because now some state government, like I said, are finding it very difficult to pay even that 30,000 naira. So what I think the federal government needs to do is to probably up the allocations to each state and also mandate each state governor to also generate look for other ways of generating funds for their states. Mm. They cannot totally depend on the federal government's allocation for paying wages to workers. As a state, Lagos state is very lucky because it's a state of over 22 million people. There's a lot of economic activities going on. So mm. it's, 
It's a bit, uh, the Lagos State Governor is having it easy. Yeah, but I'll, I'll put it like that. So other states that are not as, as lucky as Lagos State should also think of, you have the, we have these land resources. There's land. Think of projects that will make your state a viable state that people will come to, to come and yes. invest and all that. But I mean, don't just be redundant. That's the problem. So some governors assume office and they just want to maintain what they meant. They don't want to establish and bring in new initi initiatives to open up the state. And that's, that's, that's a problem. So there's a lot of resources in this country. We are very, are very blessed. Mm. I've said it now that the richest country, that the countries that pay the highest minimum wage in the world, top four, Luxembourg, is, Luxembourg the minimum wage in a month is, is close to $3,500. That's mm. almost $5 million there. monthly. Okay. Mm. They only depend on agriculture. Okay. They don't have crude oil. They don't have anything. So how are they doing it? Okay. So we need to take a cue from there. All right, Mustafa, the final word from you right now uh, for, the, for the average Nigerian who is watching and uh, is, uh, you know, hanging on the balance, you know, putting their faith to the government and the labor. You know, what would you say to them as we round off? So they say, they say that, that there's light at the end of the very tunnel. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, this country is blessed. We just need to work with our leaders and you know, help them make this thing also very easy. Our leaders also need to you know, put us in a lot of consideration. There will be no country to govern if the whole Nigeria mm -hmm. or the whole country dies of hunger. All There's right. hunger in the land, and we need to, you know, do better than that. All right, thank you so much, Mustafa. That's where we uh, rest uh, the case for thank today. Uh, we just hope that uh, at the end of the day that um, they will be able to put um, smiles on the faces of Nigerians because, That's indeed, okay. uh, most Nigerians go to bed without um, food in their stomach. Thank you yeah, so much, yeah, uh, so Mustafa. Thank, thank you for having me. All right, my guest has been Mustafa Iwinla. He is uh, a real estate uh, uh, surveyor and of course uh, he's a, a public affairs analyst and we have been looking at the issues uh, in nigeria the minimum wage and the backhoe the impact of the industrial action that was just called off uh, yesterday and uh, how nigerians are indeed uh, trying to just uh, you know beat their ends by the day well we rest the show for today and i'll return again some other time my name is justin akadoni many thanks for being a part of the show bye for now